It's Easter, and it's a holiday to celebrate God's creative power gone wild. Dead people of all types brought back to life. We'll look into it next. Welcome to Listen Up's Easter Special. I'm Lorna Duick, and today we bring you the biggest story on the Christian calendar. Easter is about everything in this world can be made new. Isn't that just the hope of spring? Actually, it's deeper than a change in the seasons. Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus, about new life from what was dead. And today, we will bring you stories of people discovering that. And along the way, we find out that Easter is a holiday that takes much more than just one day to understand. We began looking for clues on what it means in the kitchen. It's the sights and sounds and smells that Easter is just around the corner. For the religious, it's Shrove Tuesday. For the hungry, it's simply pancake time. While restaurants across the country advertise for this most holy of eating days, a group of scouts at a local church stand on guard to feed a community. Um, I guess from a, from a scouter's point of view, it is a little bit of effort on our part since we are the ones that kind of host it here in the area. So 500 sausages later, I'm uh, here enjoying some of the, the, fruit, the fruits of my labor. And so it would seem are many others. But what is behind the pre-Easter rollout of this popular breakfast item? We made our way to a kitchen with an expert in the art of making desserts. We're busy with culinary chef from George Brown College, Montgomery Pryor and Montgomery. We uh, tend to think that food is part of Easter and you're giving up some food for Lent. Yes, uh, I'm giving up desserts, and uh, which is going to be hard for me because <laughs> I love my desserts. Well, to help us understand why pancakes are part of the Easter tradition, I'm with Reverend Dr. Connie Denbach. She's a theologian and a pastor at Alderwood United Church. And uh, Connie, thank you very much for being here. And here's Montgomery. And here we go, uh, Shrove Tuesday with a bit of a swing. <laughs> we, ha we have a chocolate chip banana pancake in front of you, and then the apple spice with the apple compote to finish off. Montgomery, thank you very much. For a chef who's not doing desserts during <laughs> Lent, you did really great. Thank you, my pleasure. Enjoy. <laughs> thank you. Well, bon appetit, Connie. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. And tell us why pancakes are part of the Easter tradition. Well, um, of course, Easter is the major day for Christians. And it's a major feast day. It's the day we get together and we have a huge celebration in anticipation of what heaven is going to be like. But in the liturgical year, there are seasons of fasting and seasons of feasting. And to fully appreciate the feast, we take a seven-week journey to the cross and to the empty tomb, which we call Lent. And uh, Lent begins with a fast. And, and it often begins with pancakes to kick off the fast. <laughs> well, that seems strange, but uh, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. And usually we hear about pancakes on Pancake Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday. And so in the old days, people, when they wanted to fast, would give up their favorite foods, the foods that meant the most to them. And in those days, because you needed the calories, it was anything that had fat in it and eggs. It was your fat, your protein, your high energy, most nutritious foods. And so before Ash Wednesday, they had to get rid of all of their butter and, and oil and eggs. And what do you do if you have a lot of butter, oil, eggs, and flour? You make pancakes. You make pancakes. That's where Pancake Tuesday was born. It's our last kind of blowout feast before we begin the, the long journey of fasting uh, to Easter. Fasting is a way of becoming hungry in one way to, really, to realize our hunger for God and for more of God. So every little hunger pang you might get for chocolate or whatever it is you've given up for Lent, we transfer that over into realizing how much we crave the sweetness of God, how much we long for God, 
And so that hunger isn't just a self-deprivation, it's not a way of punishing ourselves. It's a way of realizing our deeper spiritual hungers, which can be satisfied only by God. So on the road to Easter, the time of Lent begins with a somber symbol. Turn from sin and be faithful to the gospel. And so the ashes that we place on the forehead uh, in the sign of a cross uh, is, a, is a message to the whole world that I am taking my faith very seriously and I want to make some changes, changes that will make me a better Christian, a better Catholic, a better priest, a better husband, a better wife. A mark of ash, a reminder that 40 days prior to Easter, there's spiritual work to begin. We cannot just sit back and, and think that our faith as, as of today, is that's all we need because life has many challenges and faith is a great source of strength. It's a source of hope, it's a source of love. And after the somber reflections, the reminder that Easter is more than just a one-day celebration. When we come back, the high-profile stars of the singing priests accept the invitation to Easter. But first, the annual tradition at Listen Up TV, the Prime Minister's Easter greeting. Easter is a season of tremendous hope for Christians around the world. It is a triumph of life over death and the redeeming power of love over evil. It's fitting that Easter is in the spring, a season of rebirth that brings optimism to our great land. Just the seeds that lie dormant during the winter come to life for the benefit of all, so Christians believe Christ rose from the dead to the benefit of all who wish to embrace him. Lorena and I join in wishing Canadians a happy Easter. This weekend, I hope you all experience the spirit of peace and love that Easter represents. 